Hello, all you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we are super happy to have you here. And we just ask that you bring an open mind and heart to your listening experience and to be prepared to explore vantage points that I'm convinced will help shift or solidify your current understanding of the ultimate nature of reality in a way that is extremely empowering. Speaking of exploring powerful perspectives, I'm super excited to announce the release of my very first book, The Golden Key, Modern Alchemy to Unlock Infinite Abundance. If you're ready to alchemize the circumstances in your life so that your abundance expands to an entirely new level in 2021, Head over to goldenkey.gift to download the audio or ebook as my gift to you by using the code POSITIVEHEAD. All right, all you positive heads, welcome. Welcome, one and all. I am very excited that you are here with me today on what is another beautifully magical day on our amazing planet that we get to call home. I am ever so grateful to be on this planet at this time. As Dolores Cannon would say, it's the greatest show on earth. And what's so fun to me about being here is that we are constantly being shown so many signs and synchronicities. And one of the synchronicities that came up for me today, you know, on a Tuesday, I I wake up and I know that I'm recording a podcast episode today and I typically have zero idea of what I'm going to talk about. And I just let the day unfold and see what comes up. And this topic came up three different times today, in three different instances. And so, yeah, this is what we're talking about. Thank you, universe, for showing me all these signs and synchronicities that this is the message that needs to get out today. This is what's important today for people to have a perspective or get an understanding on. And what this topic is, is essentially the spirit world our higher self, our guides, our angels, even those who have crossed over. What is that? And what does that look like? And is it all the same? And the answer is no, it's not all the same. Just like what's not all the same is, say, for instance, psychics. Not all psychics are created equal. Just because someone has the ability to see other realms or see the future or see different possibilities and probabilities doesn't mean that the information that's coming through them is always true, real, or love-centered. And you don't need to be love-centered in order to be psychic. And so there's this thing that we get kind of confused about. We think that, well, if someone is psychic, then they must be spiritual. And it's not always the case. And if someone is psychic, well, then they must be correct. And again, not always the case. Also, channeling. You know, is this information always correct because it's come through a channeled source? No. And the reason why that is is because what's the channel? And what is the motivation of that being or entity being channeled? And if that motivation is not love-centered, then it's something to be questioned. And oftentimes, what happens is, because remember, this is a universe of duality. We have positive, we have negative, and they have to coexist here. That's just the way it works. And it's the only way that we're going to learn anything. And so we have these positive aspects, we have these negative aspects. And the negative aspects The way they like to play is by trickery. What they like to do is give you a little information that feels true and is right. And then what they do is come in with false information because they know that you're going to rely on what they said because the first thing was true. And so why would they now start lying? But it's a really easy way to get us to trick us. And The thing is, any of this information, all of this information is easy to discern within yourself by how it feels. And is it love-centered? Is there fear around it? 
That's one of the biggest keys. If it's centered on fear or negativity, fighting, any of those things, then it's probably not coming from a source that is filled with love and understands the unity and harmony within all things. And so when we're seeking out and learning and wanting to get information, it's really important to remember these ideas that it's not always the same. Not every spiritual person is love-centered. Not every psychic person is love-centered. And they might be, but what happens and can happen is that sometimes we can let our egos get out of control and we start thinking we're a little big in our britches. And then that is like a free will choice to allow a negative energy, meaning an energy that you've allowed in your own self, but allow that to be, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Heightened within you to be exasperated by offering you information that would just encourage that path for you. Because why not? You've offered that opportunity because you fell out of your balance of love center. And so this can happen. We're humans. And sometimes we don't even realize that this is what's happening. And so for all of us that are listening to the messages of others and thinking that this is good and positive or this is good and real because it came through a channeled source, not always true. We have to take a step back and, and really look at the overarching theme and feel of what's going on there. And so what can kind of be super confusing is the spirit side in general. We often think about it in our 3D linear terms, meaning we live here on this material plane in a human body, and when we die, we go to the spirit side and we're a spirit. And then from there, we have a different perspective, and we know more things. And that is very true. And we're not stuck in this constraint of time at all. Time is, is not what we think it is anyway. But when we think outside of this three-dimensional existence, what we really have is a multi-dimensional existence. And so while we have this 3D space here in the material world and in the spirit world, what we also have is in other dimensions, a material world or whatever that material world is for that dimension, and then the spirit side for that dimension. So there are many levels to this. And so think about it like your energy system or chakra system, because this universe is built in patterns. And the patterns that I like to look at it in is like the colors of a rainbow, the colors of our chakra, the seven musical notes. And what we can do is look at the universe in terms of these dimensions. And also remember that this is just a base point and that there are many that grow out from these base points. So while we have a center, we also then have a sub-center and a sub-sub-center and a sub-sub-sub-center from that, and that goes on infinitely. So I find it easier in my 3D human mind to just take this base framework and go from there. And in that base framework, I see a seven-dimensional or octave. So you have your seven musical notes that make up an octave. And in this octave that we exist in, with these seven dimensions that make up really the eight, which is going back into the one again, they're all different vibrations. And in the first density, what we'll see is the elementals, fire, air, earth, and water. In the second density is where we start to see our plant and animal life forms. The third density is us, human beings. The fourth density is when we evolve and we move into a more heart-centered beingness where we actually see that we are more one, that we are less separate. It's only in the third dimension that we really have this illusion of separateness. And I say dimension, but I'm speaking in density terms and I feel like these words are different and they are often used interchangeably. But I also think that they are distinguishable to a certain degree because I'm talking about densities and a dimension is something different, meaning we live in three dimensions of 
space, and the fourth dimension is time, and then we're moving more into a fifth dimensional space when we evolve. But when I talk about densities, it goes one, two, three, four, five. We don't necessarily skip the four. And so that might be a little confusing, but that's the different terminologies that I'm using, just so that makes a little bit more sense to you. So we move into the fourth density. That is the density of love. That is the heart. That is where we just, we love one another. And we're able to actually be more telepathic. We're actually to, able to see each other's energies more clearly. And as we move up into the fifth density, that is the density of wisdom. And here we learn knowledge and we learn how to really work with and understand the power of our mind. In the fifth density is when we can do all of the things mentally. If you think of something, it is then created. If you want to travel somewhere, you think of it and you're there. That is the wisdom that you acquire at that density of awareness. And up until this level, you have the polarities. It is when you leave the fifth density and go into the sixth when you lose the polarities. It's early in the sixth density when you understand that, oh, it is all one and all of this is love. So even a negative fifth density being who then graduates has to then see the love and light that all there is. There's no way around it. It's just obvious with everything that they have learned, and they see the folly in their choices. But here's the thing that's really, really cool. All these paths lead back to the one. And so we can't do it wrong. We can do it easier. We can do it more harmoniously. That's for sure. But it always leads back to the one. And so I tell you this to remind you that there's all these different dimensional levels on the spirit side. There's the material level to it, and then the spirit side level to it. And it's not all created equal. And so when we're communicating with the other side, we need to ask a lot of questions. We need to know, all right, do you come in love and light? Do you come in unity with the one? Do you come with a message that is in service to all? These are the questions that we can ask. And when we see how that feels, then we know if this is a message that resonates with us or does not. And so the wonderful thing about learning to understand the communication that you have with your higher self is that you know you can always trust that. Because at that level, all of the negativity has fallen away. That is a source that never, ever, ever lies to you. I heard someone say the other day, you know, be aware, your higher self can lie to you to teach you a lesson. And no, they actually, they don't do that. But what they will do is they might allow you to listen to something negative coming from somewhere else so you can learn how to make your own discernments. They'll let you fall in that pit, standing there watching you and trying to help you get out in their subtle way. But they never ever lie to us just to teach us a lesson. The only way that happens is when we are inviting in other energies that are from other dimensions that, you know, may or may not be of a loving source. And so I'll tell you what happened to me when I first started channeling. I was challenged and I was given a message that didn't sit right with me. And so I said, hold on a second, that's, that's not right, I don't, and I questioned the whole thing. And the being that I was channeling said, good job, that was a test. And so this being that I'm channeling is not my higher self, this is a being that is in my own good and was using trickery to show me the way, and I were to have allowed myself to go down that path and listen to what I was told, then I would have opened up the free will option to allow that channel of message to come in. It was like offering me the opportunity to discern. Now, my higher self would have never done that, but other beings will. And another important thing to remember is that the questions always determine the answers. 
And so if the question is based on something that is negative or fearful, then that will determine the kind of answer that you get. Also, the intention. If the intention is not pure, then that's another one of those free will decisions that allows a certain energy in. So discernment is so important on this journey. And the easiest and most effective way to discern is how does that feel in my heart? And is there love contained here? Is there fear? Does this make me scared? If it does, maybe reconsider, right? Maybe ask some more questions. Another question that was asked to me actually today, which I thought was really great is, what does your higher self look like? And you know what? Nothing. (laughs) My higher self looks like nothing. I don't know if higher self that I've ever heard anyone describe what their higher self looks like. Higher self is not in form. Higher self is 100%, as far as I know, energetic and doesn't really have a form that we can see that I certainly don't see in my mind's eye. Doesn't look angelic, doesn't look orb-like. The other aspects do, for sure, have more of a material form, but higher self, not so much. When I see the being that I channel, I definitely see her. I see what she looks like. But the higher self, no. It's more of just a feeling. It is your inner being, your inner guidance. It's part of you, so it doesn't actually look separate. It's just a very strong energy that doesn't have a material form. And speaking of not being in material form, when we go to the spirit side, what happens then? And I know we've talked about this on many episodes, but when we go into our soul form, what we do ultimately, once we transition, we first go into this third dimensional level of the spirit world, and we learn whatever we need to learn by looking back at our our life and, and making those judgments based upon ourselves and feeling what it felt like, what we did to all the people in our lives. And then from there, we go off to where our vibration then matches to. So say you're a volunteer from this plant on this planet, and you came from a fifth dimensional existence, and you came into this third dimension existence just to, to volunteer to help out during this time, during this greatest show on earth that we're going through right now. Well, when you transition out of this world, you're going to go back to that fifth dimensional vibration that you were in, unless you developed a whole bunch of karma and then there's more things that you might need to heal from before you go back there. But ultimately, in my understanding, that's the way it works, that we go back to where our vibration is. As energy beings, we, it's, it's obvious that's, that's all we are on the spirit side. It's not so obvious to us here in the material world, although it is just as true all we are is energy beings. And when we go back to that other side, that's all we are seen as. And the place that we arrive in just matches that because that's just how it works. And so I hope this was helpful for some of you to help understand psychic anything, channeling anything, higher self communication, because it is all a little different. And again, best information, the only information that you can always 100% trust is from your higher self because it never lies. And yes, there is a ton of really good channeled information out there. And what was maybe once good channeling could turn into not so good channeling if the channel gets distorted in any way. If their balance gets thrown off, if they stop being love-centered, then that channel is going to change. And so always remember, looking for the love, making sure that there's no fear in the message, and if it feels in your heart good to you and that resonates, then that's probably a good message. All right, you guys, I think that's it for me today. I'm going to leave you with a song. This is Drum Spider, Bodhi Mandala, the Drum Spider remix. Until next time, I love you all. Also, before we queue up today's song, as a quick reminder, don't forget to download the Golden Key audio or ebook as my free gift to you at goldenkey.gift using the Golden Key code POSITIVEHEAD. And please, if you enjoy my gift, 
leave a positive review on Amazon so others can unlock their lives with the help of the Golden Key as well.